I'm going to go over the chart. I really filled it out pretty quickly as if I were a student in the class because I wanted to give you guys an idea how it should look and what answers look more or less correct. Keep in mind as an exercise to get you to learn about uh, this period, the pre-Socratic period, the pre-Socratic philosophers. Okay, so the first we started with Thales, you know, the first philosopher, so-called. And then, remember, we heard what he had to say about water. And in fact, you might want to put more than what I just put in. I put in a little bit that you got out of the slide. You did some reading on it. But when we were talking about everything actually comes from water, you might remember there, there was a this Greek word, arche, that I might have talked about. That really has to do with the area of reality, metaphysics. And... It, within metaphysics, it's really an answer to cosmology. When he says everything comes from water, water is the origin. Where does the cosmos come from? It comes from water. So I made a note of that. And the other th interesting thing about that particular claim that I focused on was that he also said that everything that exists is actually currently composed of water. That is, water got everything started, brought everything into existence, and everything, according to Thales, is still made up of water. So that's what I put in there talking about in the area of metaphysics. There were a couple of other claims that, that Thales made about uh, the Earth floating on water that were kind of significant. Um, they were significant scientifically. They were also significant in the development of the, the right frame of mind to make philosophy. But you could add those on. I just left them out, on for the sake, out for the sake of simplicity. And actually, I made a comment in the epistemology, the theory and knowledge section about that. I mean, the truth of the matter is Thales and Aximander and Eximides, the Milesians, the first guys that I'm going to go through, or the first guys that I'm going through, really did not have a position on you know, knowledge and skepticism. I mean, they thought they were trying to learn what was going on, and they had a theory. But the interesting thing is it looks like implicit implied in their claims is that you can know things about the world. You can actually gain scientific knowledge. And how do you actually gain that scientific knowledge? You gain it through observation. So it certainly sounds like Thales and all the other Milesians and Aximander and, Ax and Aximenes, I mean all three of them, I, I said all of them like they were hundreds, we're really talking about three main characters, but all of them and the positions they took seem to imply that everything that we know can be learned through observation. So it seemed to be endorsing um, empiricism. I might mention now that we're not going to see a lot in the ethical and political philosophy uh, realm because that really begins with Socrates. There were a few pre-Socratics that had something to say about political philosophy, most of that, most of the what they had to say has been lost over the years, but some of them did take positions on it. So that's Thales, and that's how to fill out the chart for Thales.